uh, Jupiter, its interior and atmosphere. The layers of Jupiter are core, liquid metallic hydrogen, liquid molecular hydrogen, metallic and molecular. Since Jupiter has such a strong mass and pressure, it squeezes the hydrogen into a liquid metallic state, which only exists at very high pressures. And the hydrogen becomes electrically conductive. That's why it's called metallic hydrogen. Liquid metallic hydrogen kind of resembles the material that the evil cyborg has in the Terminator 2. To my mind, that's the way I envision liquid metallic hydrogen. Uh, the cyborg from Terminator 2 when he melts, you know, that metal. <clears throat> and is a great conductor of electricity. So that's the way that I envision it. But we don't have liquid metallic hydrogen here on Earth. So you can't, like, I can't show you because it only exists in very, very high pressures, you know. This is kind of a comparison of the interior of the planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, you see here, the core, water, metallic hydrogen, molecular hydrogen changing to liquid, you see here. Uh, Saturn is going to be similar. It's going to have core, water, metallic hydrogen, not as big as Mer uh, Jupiter's, and molecular hydrogen. Uh, Uranus and Neptune, uh, rock and iron, water, molecular hydrogen, rock, water, uh, rock and iron, water, molecular hydrogen. What's the most obvious difference you see between these two versus these two? What layer is it missing? Look at the color. You see the blue, the, the, the purple? It's missing that layer, right? What's the purple layer? The metallic hydrogen. Metallic hydrogen. It doesn't exist in these two. Okay, why? In order to have metallic hydrogen, you need what? Very high pressure to make the hydrogen into that metallic form. The pressure in here is not that high as those two. You see? So that's a the most obvious difference. Since Jupiter has all this liquid layer and it spins so fast, it produces the strongest magnetic field in our solar system, which is 10 times stronger than Earth's. 78% of Jupiter is hydrogen and the rest is helium. So majority of Jupiter, it's kind of like our sun, majority of it is hydrogen. Jupiter has three layers of clouds, water, ammonia, hydrogen, sulfide, and ammonia. So this is water, that's one layer, ammonia, hydrogen, sulfide, and ammonia. Jupiter's atmosphere is also dominated by belt zone formations. The belt zone patterns are horizontal on Earth, on Jupiter, unlike Earth's which are circular, okay? The Earth's belt zones are circular on Jupiter, horizontal. The belts are sinking regions of low pressure and they look dark. Think of the way to remember, think of like your belt that you wear around your uh, waist, dark black, uh, you know, uh, belt. Belt is dark and it's a sinking region of high pressure, uh, of uh, low pressure. Uh, sinking region of low pressure, it's going down. Zones are rising regions, it's going up, of high pressure. So the high pressure goes up, low pressure goes down. And the zones look bright. The largest storm pattern on Jupiter is called Great Red Spot, okay, which has been in existence for more than 300 years and is about twice the size of Earth, huge, and it's still going on, right? Because Jupiter doesn't have a surface like a continent on Earth. The continent slows down the, uh, the hurricane pattern, right? But this one can last for years and years and years and years. It's rings and satellites. The Voyager 1 spacecraft observed the rings of Jupiter in 1979. That's the first time we noticed that it had rings. They are the halo ring, the main ring, and two gossamer rings. Halo, main, and two gossamer. The rings scattered the rays of the sun forward towards the spacecraft. Okay, so what happened was the spacecraft went on the other side of Jupiter 
and when the when the sunshine came, the sunlight, it bounced off those rings and scattered it forward to the spacecraft. This is a phenomenon known as forward scattering. What does forward scattering prove? It proves that the rings are made up of tiny particles, not big particles. See? The sunlight comes and it scatters forward. So this proved that the rings of Saturn are unlike the rings of, uh, the rings of Jupiter are unlike the rings of Saturn. The rings of Jupiter are made of small particles, not big. The main ring of Jupiter is inside the Roche limit of Jupiter. The Roche limit of a planet is the smallest distance that the moon can exist and not be torn apart by the planet's tidal forces. Jupiter has many moons, but its four major ones are known as the Galilean moons. The closest is Io, then Europa, then Ganymede, then Callisto. These are the ones discovered by Galileo. Io is the most volcanic place in the solar system. Europa has been in the news a lot because it is thought that it might contain water. You're going you're gonna to hear a lot more about Europa, by the way, in the future as we do more research and we even send a spacecraft there to dig in the water, see if there's life form in Europa. It's going to be in the news a lot. Uh, this is the one that we were talking about earlier, the Roche limit. When the moon comes inside of the Roche limit, it breaks up. The gravitational uh, effect of the planet breaks that up and it starts forming into a ring. Okay? That's one way that you can form rings, is when the moon comes too close to a planet, you see. Europa seems to be an active world because it has a smooth crust lacking craters. Ganymede is the, th uh, the third moon, the third Galilean moon, is the largest moon in the solar system, okay? So make sure you remember those kinds of things, largest, smallest, most active, which one has water in it, okay? Callisto is the last of the Galilean moons and contains a 50 to 50 rock and ice mixture. Callisto is one of the most cratered worlds in our solar system, okay? The densities of the moons decreases as one gets farther out from Jupiter. That means Io is the densest, then Europa, then uh, Ganymede, then Callisto. Uh, 